Good morning! Dan Moran here from Concierge Diamonds for my weekly Q&A session. Uh, it is Tuesday, the 29th of November, about 11 o'clock Pacific time, and I hope this finds you all doing well. Uh, today's topic is diamond synthetics, diamond alternatives. So that's lab-grown diamonds, mossonites, cubic zirconia, treated diamonds, and other alternatives to traditional natural diamonds. Let's spend a minute or two on each one, pros and cons, just to get you guys grounded. So, why do people buy diamond alternatives? It would be because, for whatever reason, they can't afford a natural diamond, or for one reason or another, they, they choose not to have a natural diamond. Some people have uh, ethical concerns, some people have environmental concerns, and for whatever reason, uh, personally, they prefer not to have a natural diamond. But by far, the prevailing reason not to buy a natural diamond for those that don't is price. Uh, diamond alternatives are less expensive than natural diamonds, so people often are looking for a solution. One solution is a treated diamond, and there are two primary types of treatment, drilling and filling. What these are is they both are processes that improve the appearance of a natural diamond. Drilling and filling are clarity treatments, so they improve the perceived clarity of a natural diamond. So what people do is they take a diamond out of the ground that has an ugly inclusion in it, and they drill a hole in it with a laser, and then they either bleach that inclusion with some chemicals that wash in and out of the diamond and don't stay in, or they fill that inclusion with silicone or other chemicals to help trick the eye into making it less visible. So a, a drilled or filled diamond can have a better appearance than it did when it came out of the ground naturally, but it is no longer considered a natural diamond. It's now considered a treated diamond. And as a result, it loses quite a bit of its value. If you look at a, a drilled and filled diamond versus a natural diamond, typically the drilled or filled diamond will be worth 60 or 70% less than a similar natural diamond. It's also possible to treat diamonds for color, where you take a natural diamond and you subject it to radiation or other chemical processes uh, that will affect its color in either a temporary or permanent way. And that is sometimes done to get colored diamonds Almost all of the blue diamonds that you see on the market, in particular, if you go to places like the Caribbean where they sell very inexpensive blue diamonds, that color is not natural. It's been added to the diamond via treatment. Uh, and similarly, treated diamonds sell for a substantially lower price than a similar natural diamond. So those are options, but I find that uh, most of the market stays away from treated diamonds, both because they're not as well understood, because I think a lot of women would prefer not to wear a treated diamond, and also because they don't retain any value. Generally, uh, resale value on a drilled, filled, or color-treated diamond will be close to zero. So from a perspective of inherent value or investment, uh, they're definitely less uh, safe and less uh, promising than a natural diamond. Well, what about a synthetic diamond, a lab-grown diamond? Um, I've done a video on this topic before, uh, earlier this year, where I said that uh, there are some reasons not to buy a lab-grown diamond, and the, th and the three reasons that I cited were they can't make them as big as you might want, they're difficult to insure, and they don't hold resale value. Now, to back up to remind you, a lab-grown diamond, it is now possible in, under various laboratory conditions to cause a diamond crystal to grow in a matter of a few days or weeks, as opposed to over thousands of years, a billion years ago underground. So we are synthetically recreating what Mother Nature did a billion years ago. Um, but again, the three reasons that I cited six months ago for not buying a lab-grown diamond were they can't make them over a certain size, they're difficult or impossible to insure, and they don't hold any resale value should you ever decide you want to sell your, your lab-grown diamond for purposes of upgrading or for whatever reason. One of those two reasons probably isn't as valid anymore as it was six months ago. The science on lab-grown diamonds is improving all the time, and they are, in fact, able to make them bigger and bigger. So you might not have the same size restriction that you had before on lab-grown diamonds. The other two still hold water, though. Resale value for lab-grown diamonds is still very, very low, essentially zero. It's still very, very difficult to get insurance for lab-grown diamonds because they don't have inherent value. Uh, and there's also, I think, a pretty negative market perception of lab-grown diamonds among a lot of people. You know, people hear the word synthetic, they think fake. And at least in my experience, most of my clients don't want to touch lab-grown diamonds because they want the real thing. So 
it's an alternative. It's it's promising. It's improving. I'll certainly be keeping tabs on it. But for right now, I still recommend staying away from wrapped on diamonds. Well, what about diamond alternatives like mossonite or cubic zirconia? Those are generally man-made. Mossonite is a completely man-made stone. The CZ, likewise, is a man-made stone that are similar in appearance to diamond. And to an untrained eye, maybe you can be convinced you're looking at a diamond, especially mossonite, which looks pretty similar to a diamond and has similar chemical properties, hardness, etc. Not quite as hard, not quite as brilliant, slightly different, but pretty close. And to an untrained eye or to a casual observer, you might be convinced that a mossonite is a diamond. So why not get a mossonite? They're cheaper. They're certainly cheaper. You'll, you'll pay a lot less for a mossonite than you will for a diamond. Why not get one? Well, to me, a mossonite ring is a ring that's pretending to be a diamond ring, and something about that feels inherently dishonest to me. If you can't afford to get a diamond ring or you don't want to get a diamond ring, then get an alternative. Get a sapphire. Get a topaz. Get an amethyst. Get something inexpensive, but that's clearly not a diamond. And it's not pretending to be a diamond. So that when somebody says to you, hey, why did you get a topaz in your engagement ring rather than getting a diamond? You can say, because I wanted to get a topaz. When you buy a Mossonet ring, you're going to spend your, your life making one of two decisions when someone asks you about your ring. Either you're going to lie and say it's a diamond, or you're going to have to explain why you got a Mossonet instead of getting a diamond. And for a lot of people, that's an uncomfortable thing to do. Also, there are certain restrictions and limitations on mossonite. They all seem to have this greenish, yellowish overtone that a lot of people find unpleasant, and certainly I do. Um, so there are some reasons not to get a mossonite. And at the end of the day, look, you either want to get a diamond ring or you don't. If you want to get something else, then by all means, go get something else. But I don't like the idea of getting something that pretends to be a diamond ring. I hope that makes sense, right? It's, uh, it's like saying, hey, I didn't want to get a, a sports car with a... With a 50 horsepower engine. So I got a pickup truck. It's not a sports car. It's not trying to be a sports car. I hope that's a useful analogy. So that's my brief summary on synthetic diamonds, lab-grown diamonds, treated diamonds, and diamond alternatives. And while they certainly in some circumstances can offer uh, an alternative to buying a natural diamond ring, in the long term, I don't see them as really competitive with diamonds because they're just, they're just not the same thing. And I don't think they appeal to the same kind of people, to the same market. Uh, again, these things change all the time, and as technology, especially in lab-grown diamonds, continues to improve, I'll definitely keep tabs on it, and I'll keep you guys updated um, as my view changes. But for now, there really isn't a good substitute for the real thing. I hope you found this helpful. Feel free to call or email with any questions, and I'm happy to discuss it with you. Again, this is Dan Moran from Concierge Diamonds. Thanks.